Hey there YouTube, Travis here. So we're going on a little bit of an adventure today. Right now, I'm about to leave my house to go check out this lot. This is the remains of a former scooter and moped shop up in Washington. Uh, someone locally here in Portland bought it out and they only care about the scooter stuff. So the remains of the moped section of this moped shop um, are what I am buying up today. I'm joining a friend of mine, Andrew, and we are gonna go see what's left. Now, I don't know what we're gonna find. I did see some pictures. It does look like there's some dealer tools there, which is what I'm most excited about, but uh, we'll have to see. All right, let's check it out. Yeah, I think we've owned them, right? This is so cool. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I don't get it, but we'll, we'll see how it looks. It says yeah. it's easy to install. Yeah. It better be, right? We're not real money. smart. I'm not going to stand by that, I bet. Unless it just sits on there and falls off. <laughs> like how... So what? This yeah, is... Some compression yeah. testers? What we got here? Two of them? <laughs> wow, this is great. Yeah, we'll leave one spark plug one and take. Oh, yeah, they're both the same. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so yeah. as long as they're yeah. both the same, just like leave me one that looks Leave, leave the better one. We can go over this later, but... Uh, there's some in my car. Is that display case part of it? Yeah, this is the thing that he thought would be. Into. All right, we're doing an overview of, trying to do a quick overview of everything from that haul. Um, maybe we'll just start here at the bottom. This is a big old box, so ignitions. Um, most of this is Bosch, Saks, 505, 504 stuff. Um, some Italian CEV stuff. Still pretty pretty early to go through all that. Um, Andrew's work bag right here, which has just a totally random assortment of ignition cylinders, some starter clutches down there, battery chargers. Wow. Under this Tomos dash, there is a ton of sacks, friction discs. Some of these look like some good used friction discs. That's okay. Mirror set. And then just bags and bags of new old stock parts. It's cool seeing the old school Saks logo. Um, some cotter pins down there for pedals, tons of 50cc base gaskets, I'm guessing. Oh, this one's for Motobacane. Nice. But yeah, just a lot of stuff to sort through. There's your made in Western Germany. That's neat. Oh yeah, tons of little O-rings. These are more Saks clutch parts. These are your clutch donuts, the plastic airbox cover, and some uh, clutch gasket. Wow, a bunch of square bing tops. And then Alteza kits, which I don't know this is probably for some French thing, I bet. Hard to tell. Andrew carefully categorized our dealer toolkit lot up here. I think the thing that we both zoomed in on immediately were these. These are your, um, for shimming your crank on your Pook ZA50 rebuild. These are kind of a rare set of tools. It just, yeah. I've seen this before. I don't remember or know what this is for, but that's part of a Pook dealer tool set. Um, bearing installers have bearing pullers with different sizes. And it's maybe a flywheel holder back there. There's just a lot to, to sort out here. It's, it's pretty wild. Um, joining that is a collection of, this is a gasket set right here couple of them for, for V1, just a sax one, and then just tons and tons and tons of manuals. Oh, you see something? Ooh, this is really cool. So this dealer must have been active into the 90s because it's got this Corrado stuff here, which that's super cool. Wow. Java. Yeah, some pretty nice posters. Yeah. Wow. Thought that was a Magnum X, but it's a Java. 
Space Age sidecar. Got a couple of these. Mm -hmm. Wow. Parts catalogs for just about everything here. Peugeot. Man, it's going to take us a long time to sort through all this. This is, this is pretty intense. This place also did some scooter stuff, so I'm sure there's some scooter manuals in here. Wow. Well, hopefully we can cross-reference some parts numbers for, for these dealer tools. That'd be the, the neat thing. So this initially, I think, really piqued my interest looking at some pictures of this parts pile. This is indeed, this is either a factory new old stock or it was very, very lightly run 505D engine. Um, it's got a cork in there in the cylinder. Um, it's hard to tell because it is dusty, but I don't think this was ever run. Could be wrong, but that was kind of kind of neat to find. I mean, it's just so clean. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would be so surprised if this had run. Like, even there's nothing really in the exhaust port. It might be a tiny bit of carbon. It's hard to tell. Either way, this thing was meticulously rebuilt or could be new old stock. Um, still more, like, general dealer tools to sort through. Um, these are some, like, old school leak down testers which I thought was was pretty neat. But this one goes on to the intake. This one screws into the spark plug threads. Finding a gauge that reads this low is a little hard to do, so it's kind of neat to see an actual small one. I love the squeegee bulb. This looks like almost all sax parts and finally some unused clutch discs in there, seals, whole thing of points setups over here. Nice thing is these are the same kind of points you'd use on a, on a pook, so that would translate over. Um, wow, it's, it's nice. Like here's a bunch of throttle slides for the sax square bings. I just, uh, I just wonder how we're gonna sort through all this. It is, it is a lot. Got a moped in pieces over here. The sticker says it's a bombardier, not a not a pook bombardier, obviously. Um, I'm pretty sure this is a sax frame. Um, we'll have to, to triple check, but this was, it looks like it was assembled at one point, but again, not, not run for very long. I wonder what the story is on it. This thing is neat. It does look like this is a moped carrier that mounts right up to your bumper maybe it says fits most cars and vans so this could be kind of neat as a novelty and then we have this giant rack o things all the tiny little things so if i need an axle nut there it is if i need machine screw or just all sorts of little stuff cotter pins for my pedals there are just so many itty bitty little things here. It's uh, it's gonna take a long time to try and organize this. We have miscellaneous pistons. <laughs> uh, most of these are good used pistons. Um, some look like they got a little little hot, but uh, total total another set of pistons to sort through. And then way back over here, we have the Travis Tutorial official. Torco brand two-stroke oil, enough to last a lifetime. All right, so let's do a deeper dive on some of these dealer tools. Uh, we tried to organize, and Andrew did most of the legwork here on trying to bag and tag and figure out what's what, um, and some unknowns too, but we can start with the most obvious ones, the pook tools. I think coming from the left up here, this is your pook bearing installer right here you have this tool which is andrew what is this for that is the clutch support plate nice i think that's what it's called there's this guy which this is the reamer right yeah so i guess theoretically you put this in here and it will ream it out to a larger your brass size. bushing yeah yeah yeah, yeah. nice 
That's legit. This is a bench tester. Bench holder. Bench yeah. holder for your moped, for your engine. These are the really cool shimming tools for shimming the crank on a ZA50. So you can loosen that up and then slide this for your crank shimming. This is a flywheel holder, it expands and it's got some nubs on the other side. This is your bearing puller for doing a rebuild. This T-handle guy, remember what this one is? Maybe. That might be it. Something doesn't seem right though. You have to think about it a little bit more. You can put the nut on the other end. There, it's fixed. There you go, perfect. <laughs> Or is this another bearing installer? Main bearing. What was this big guy again? Uh, that is the seal installer then. Okay. That'll help you install a few of the seals, yeah. Nice. Neat. And then these guys can be used with the uh, bearing puller. Is that what this triangle guy is? That is your clutch locking device for the ZA50. Ah. And it is in conjunction with this one. Nice. So that little nubby will fit in this little hole. And that holds your clutch on. Cool. So we have some random assortment of Peugeot tools down here. And as far as we can tell, these were all bearing and seal installers. To where like this would go and you'd have your seal and you would push it in a certain amount. We think, right? Yeah, based on the photos we looked at. Okay. Neither Andrew or I have ever rebuilt a Peugeot, so we'll have to take, take the parts number's word on that. So then we've got Minarelli and Sax tools down here. Um, the Minarelli stuff, we actually had this, someone spilled their coffee all over this thing. But these two pullers we have right here. And then those holders right there are what we have right here. These, these open up, and then this one's got a little thing on it so you can open it to different, different sizes. This is your Peugeot tool, but you could probably use this with any stock sized moped piston. Um, this is for pushing in the wrist pin. So you've got a T-handle up there and you push that in. It's kind of neat. In addition to this driving tool, which uh, once again, not super knowledgeable about Peugeots, but uh, that's what we got. This is a Saks hook wrench. So when you're getting the nut off of the sprocket, um, you can wrap this around the sprocket, hold it in place. Um, that's kind of cool. Random motobicane tool, but this is a fork wrench tool for a motobicane. Andrew, what were these big boys for? Uh, shoot, it's written on there. Peugeot holding strap. Okay. This is your sax clutch holder tool. And there's some other stuff over here. Like these are clearly larger tools, most likely meant for scooters. Um, but then we get to our unknowns and I'm hoping that some viewers of this will be able to identify what some of these tools are. Cause Andrew and I went through tons of shop manuals on the internet and the paper manuals that we have in that box. And we couldn't come up with these. Uh, first tool is this, man, I thought I was looking at like a toilet tank part here. Um, but this C tool and then this tapered guy right here, no idea what that is. Possibly is connected with this. Possibly associated with that. We have these, this lollipop tool right here. Not sure what that is. Those holes are threaded. It looks like, no, maybe not. No, they, uh, they're, they're smooth. Not sure what that's for. Not sure about this larger one right here. Not sure about this one. It's weighted in one end for sure. This end kind of makes it look like it's meant for an axle nut, but that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Probably the one I'm most excited about is this half crank tool right here with this little bit welded on the back. Um, one of the Puddle Cutters members speculated that this would go in a vise right here and you'd be able to do some sort of shimming or testing with this sitting in a vise. This looks like it might be a sax crank, but it's hard to tell. 
another crescent style tool right here another much larger crescent style tool right here and then this guy right here which i'm guessing is a, some sort of shim tool um each side is a different thickness um but otherwise we're not sure what that is okay there youtube well i hope you enjoyed the fruits of this old moped dealer buyout where we go from here well realistically having all these parts is nice but i don't know what i'm going to do with a box full of intake gaskets for for a sax carb um realistically my buddy andrew and i uh, we do need to make our money back because uh, we did have to, to spend some cash to get this stuff but the hope is that all of this all these different gaskets and bolts and engine parts and carburetor parts can can get used or can get into the hands of people who will help them be used. At some point in time, we will probably sell, uh, once this is organized better, a, a lot of these parts uh, sectioned up by the type of bike that they fit. Obviously, a ton of sax stuff. Okay, the YouTube. Once again, hope you enjoyed it. Until next time.